sorted out here and then we will get going some pumping up music here change track here a little bit where's my window there we go hello friends how are you welcome to another shiny developer series live stream and i've had a heck of a day heck of a week i could use some uh fun little hacking around here to cheer me up so that's what we're gonna do tonight with um the project that we started configuring at least the development environment of it called quarto um, for technical and literate uh reproducible programming um there's a better way to describe it my brain just still fried a little bit but we'll get into it so Hello, everybody. So, uh, welcome, Big Pod. Great to have you with us as always. And Tan, welcome. And hey, recursive acronym, man. How are you? Well, thanks for joining. Yeah, I I'm always appreciate if you can pop in anytime. It's always fun. You had a great uh, session with developing your first R package. I was glad to see you make good progress on ggplot 2 which I'm still quite rusty with, but luckily, Tan was able to give you some awesome feedback on that as well. Um, but yeah, uh, Big Pod, congrats. Yes, you are back on the streaming front. I, I had fun watching that. I couldn't see all of it, but you definitely had a nice setup going again. So so yeah, tonight, uh, to get more specific, I have, as some of you are aware, I have a workshop later at our studio comp that I need to start developing materials for, as well as a conference at the end of this month with um, called the Shiny Conference by Absalon, where I have a presentation and I'll be moderating two panel discussions. So <laughs> I've got to get a couple of bits in place before I feel comfortable enough to speak to those. So we might do a little brainstorming on my presentation for that conference. I had the general idea because I did have to send them an abstract, but I've got to do some prep work to see if my apps I want to show off and uh, general philosophy of it is up to snuff and uh big pot i'm glad you're here or at least hear parts of this because you want to take a guess of what i'm going to talk about at that presentation well it's going to be my little uh r and shiny hackery for our hotshot racing league back uh, a year or so ago so i'm going to resurrect some of that for um, the presentation to kind of go over the full story of how all that shook out um so it's kind of building upon what I did for the shiny contest, but I'm going to really put the, the full story in it. So Big Pod, you and Monica, Martin, um, and Yannick, of course, are all going to have uh, cameos in that one way or another. So that'll, that'll be a good time. So, and yes, hello, uh, David Jackson. Hope you're doing well. You've been, yeah, uh, you've been uh, streaming away. I always see the notifications and I hope I can tune in for that uh, when work kind of slows down a little bit. Good stuff. All right, so let's get to it. Get to our uh, our scenes here. Okay, so we're gonna get the environment set up, but off stream after the chaos that ensued with my Docker um, ineptitude on environment variables yesterday, I did figure that out off stream, and I think I've got it working. But we're gonna bootstrap it up right here and make sure it all works so let's open our folder up shiny bib series calling this of a very uh, odd name of shiny racing just something to get it going here so this should prompt me yep reopen a container and let's see what chaos ensues here Looks like some updates happening. And Big Pod, you're saying you'll start uh, doing streaming weekly. That's awesome. That's kind of what I try to do as well. Oh, wow. This is going quick. I think it's going to work. Come on, come on. Everything's magically forming here. Come on, come on. Okay, I think we got it doing the whole port forwarding stuff, but we got our extension showing up on the left here. So I think we are in business. 
So let's get a terminal going here to make sure that everything is on in order. Yep, Cordo is here. It would have had an error message otherwise. So very good, very good. So let's get the R terminal going here. Let's um, initialize RM for us. Whoops. Okay, we'll quit on that. Now this is the part I still need to automate a little bit. I have better ways of doing this um, in, um, R profile stuff, but I haven't fully bake that in just yet. So first we just copy my temp stuff right here. Although I might have a better way. I may take a minute to do this. In order to do it, I have to be a little sneaky here in a sense. Okay. I'm going to pop a tab off screen because that's going to potentially contain some confidential bits. But while I do that, we're going to look at what I want to look at for Quarto um, today. Let's uh, get dark mode going here. That's a little lining on the eyes. Okay. I want to start making a presentation with Reveal.js. So this is kind of what it looks like um, under the hood here. Looking pretty stylish here. Um, I really like the code animation stuff. The line highlighting, this is all out of the box. Um, way better than what we saw. Again, this is Eric's opinion here. Way better than what we saw years ago with the Reveal JSR package that was linked in with the R Markdown ecosystem and now Quarto has all this built right in for us. So just uh take we a look underscore at that. this sorted underscore would have just subscribed. Oh thank you, West Pacific Buddha. That is very nice of you for the subscription. I always appreciate that. And to all the subscribers out there, there aren't many of you, but certainly thank you for, for that. It really means a lot and even those just kind of following along sharing the word or spreading the word if you will those are always um very appreciative these days it really is one of the more fun things i do is what what we do on here even though i am by far the one streamer in this little group that we have here that often has the most uh, chaos ensue when i do my development so <laughs> It's always that, no way. Okay, so I think I'm about set. I'm going to copy something from the other screen and then we're gonna throw it in the VS Code. Okay, so where was I? I need to get the R profile right here. This will give you a clue a little bit of what I've been um, working on a bit and yeah big pot it is very late for you so yeah thanks for popping in nonetheless for those that aren't aware big pot is based in, in Europe so it's way late for him ah <laughs> uh, yes yes um, so what you're seeing here is at work I've had the privilege of working with um, github that's hosted on github.com but through you know the enterprise you know arrangement so my company has like a private github org and one of the perks that Microsoft has built in over the last uh, year or so is what's called code spaces which basically is running VS code in a web browser fully containerized basically what I'm doing here in a sense um, and so every trick that I've learned most every trick I've learned since last year with this kind of containerized dev setup works on code spaces I only had to tweak maybe a couple things but 
but the other thing I did alongside that is make my RM setup a lot, a lot easier to use. So what this block of code is saying here is that if it detects I'm in code spaces, or if it detects that I'm using VS Code locally, that's why I have the OR here, I have a separate RM profile called VS Code Dev, and then that will make that will make it so that I can tailor a R package environment or set of R packages for the VS Code development and keep that separate from the R Studio development. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, the VS Code development needs a couple extra packages to make it play nicely with the with the extension that VS Code has, which our studio does not need because obviously our studio has all the, the connections built in. So I'm gonna give this a shot for, for this bit and see if this actually works here. So I'm gonna, did I save this already? Yep, I think I did. So we'll close this. Bootstrapping RM, downloading RM, perfect, perfect. And it recognize I'm in this VS Code dev environment. That's exactly what I want. Now I am going to install language server. This is the one that really makes all the engine go. And then the HTTPGP, throw that in there. Um, I think I need winter as well. Of course, I didn't spell it right. Winter. Okay. And let's uh, throw a portal in there. Perfect. Let's quit this and I'll relaunch it. This should not complain to me this time around. Aha! Yes! It worked perfectly. Oh, oh wow. I've, I've, spent, I've sunk a lot of hours into this. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of trial and error off stream, both for this particular streaming setup, but also for the work setup that I just kind of mooched a little bit off of. So, yes, yes. Um, and what, yeah, Wimsu Buddha, you, yeah, you're mentioning Jesse. Yeah, I uh, had a great pleasure of in the latest Our Weekly Highlights podcast of uh, shouting her out for the great uh, video that she. Uh, recorded with Barry Schlerky for the shot from the shiny team um, building this cool little game in shiny and how they approach the development process so if you haven't listened to our weekly highlights episode 73 definitely uh, check out mine and Mike Thomas's uh, take on that it was it was great fun to watch so but yeah um, and the lead the lead highlight of that episode is kind of what we're gonna look at now is that We've been hearing about Coral recently. The the cone of silence has been lifted. And I am on this stream in other ways. I am kicking the tires of it. So we're gonna get to it. So yes, yes. Thank you. For, yeah, thank you for listening to that. I always appreciate it. We had that a uh, little uh, break there unexpectedly because of the back end. That's still not 100% for our weekly itself, but we're we're going to try and keep moving forward, and ironically, I will probably be a curator, not for the next issue, but for the one after that, and that coincides with the, the upcoming Shiny Conference, so don't be shocked if you see a lot of Shiny stuff thrown in because of yours truly, so, okay. Let's go back to the uh, portal page here. I can close one of these uh, windows off screen. All right, so, whoops, that's not the right one. Let's get back to the gallery here. I just, I don't think Quartal has like an easy way of like launching um, a template yet. I, I could be wrong. Um, let's see what this does. Oh, they're good. Okay, so this is the, the presentation. I always like to start with an example and then just tweak the heck out of it um, as, as we go forward. So let's do a quick scan here. Are there any packages that this requires? Let's just do a library. Oh, 
Oh, digiplot too. Yeah, we'll probably throw that in. We probably will have some plots. Let's see what else. Leaflet. We'll probably take out the leaflet stuff. We don't really need that. But anyway, let's get. Let's just copy this out. And we will do a new file. And I think VS Code is aware of Quarto. Yep, got Quarto here. Throw it in here. We'll just call it slides.qmd. So QMD is the new syntax at the end of the file extension for Quarto Markdown. But it doesn't matter if you're doing like a web report or, or an HTML report or a presentation deck or some JavaScript thing. It's always going to be this uh, Quarto extension, as best I can tell. So. Okay, I'm going to find the leaflets, leaflet stuff and just kind of get that out of here. Um, Leaflet falls here. That may have been the only one. Okay, good. We'll throw in uh, ggplot2 here. Should be a quick install. Although it looks like it's. Yeah, that was pretty quick. I have all this cache, so it's super quick. Okay, now. I have had um, a good dialogue with uh, JJ Allaire on the issue tracker for the Quarto extension of VS Code, or the VS Code extension for Quarto, and there were some things that I misunderstood about how it works, but to render a document, I don't know what these explanation points are about. Oh, okay, well. All right, if you want to put that in the path, I have no issue with that. Let's relaunch that, I guess. Okay. Okay, okay fine. We'll do that. All right, no harm, no foul. Now, let's see, the keyboard shortcut was Control-Shift-K. Here we go. Huh? Uh, I just installed ggplot2. Yeah, that's that's basically right. Uh, um, what in the world is going on? Oh my gosh, what did that copy paste do? That was not intentional at all. Okay, <laughs> that was that was uh, crazy there. Let's make sure no ever. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch of nonsense that came from that copy paste. <laughs> wow, that's what I get for not doing the raw format of, of that. Um, okay, that might have caused some of the error, but I could have sworn I just installed a ggplot2, but I guess we're going to start again. Okay. Sure it rolls. Yeah, that's a Although, this may be something. Let's try this again, but I, I have a bad feeling about this. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, I think I have found something with this execution mode that does not play nicely with RN because what I did there that was so quick, I should have spoke about this is that the way that portal renders documents in visual studio code is it basically farms out the rendering to the portal cli so we have this op portal bin portal preview slides qmd but it seems like when it does that it's not quite aware that this is an rm project now question is does it do it with this 
or and does it work with our studio with RM? Or is it failing in both now? One thing I also did off stream is I revised my container setup so that when I launch this, I also at the same time launch the R Studio version. So we're going to do that now. We're gonna to go to our studio instead and we're gonna see if we can uh, replicate this. I need to first fire up a, another browser here. Just clearing out some old junk here. Um, okay, so I need to refresh my memory here. Um, what local port I used for this? So 7999. Let's hope that actually did launch. We're about to find out. 7999. And yes, it did. Okay, so. The magic of OBS and this uh, Phantom Third display, I'm able to magically bring this here. So we're going to. Shen Danieli just subscribed. Here's half a beer for your bad day. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, Daniel. I definitely needed it. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, any any uh, beverage to take the mind off of <laughs> what's happened today is. Uh, is a very appreciative i've there is a lot i want to say but i know if i do say everything i am probably going to get in huge hot water but <laughs> but there may be some bits i can reveal later i don't know <laughs> okay so let's um create a new project existing directory <laughs> I, I love I love what Daniel falls out here. That's what the in-person our studio comp is for. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've um, yeah, I, I've I've learned and I've shared some interesting bits at the previous ones with uh, very uh, trusted friends. But I am honestly, I am super super pumped and excited that i will be able to see you for the first time in person and i think tan i sounds like you're going to be there as well tan if you're still listening um but i certainly yeah and jesse as well obviously she's with our studio too um i really am excited to meet all of you and, and face to face and this uh power streamer group we have here is going to be represented quite well so Yes, there will be uh, many, many additional story times, for sure. <laughs> You've also got a sewing machine. No, I, I have um, one of those kind of more typical sewing machines, which I, I'm not good at. So I'm very curious if you're able to sew some good stuff. Um, I, my creativity is with uh, technology, not with <laughs> other things. Okay, let's create a project here. Now, what's interesting here is let's restart the R session. That should have picked up RM. That's intriguing. Now I wonder if it's this R profile that's doing it. So let's um, comment that out and let's relaunch it. Let's see if there's something crazy going on here. Now that, huh, that should not have been a problem. This if L, this if should not have been a problem. Let's. I'm very curious about this. Oh, there it goes. Hmm. Bizarre. Okay. So, let's open up the slides here and see now this is this is the other chaos that happened last time is I wasn't installing the right R Studio version um, through the Rocker project, but now I've got it. So that's why we see this render on save. We'll check that and let's just 
render this and see if this has the same error as before. Okay, I... Okay, I, I do see something here. Let's rule out failure number one. But I do see a potential issue with this. So let's get our mark down in here. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. We have something here. So both in VS Code and in our studio, if I have an RM project, the Quarto rendering is not picking it up. I sense maybe a bug report coming because that is something I do for every presentation or report I do is I use RM for it because I want to keep track of all the dependencies. So that is very interesting. Now, here's what will be interesting here. I know I'm on tangents here, but let's see if I render the code block itself, if it works. This little one right here, it's just doing a simple ggplot. Let's see what happens. Huh. This is very, very this, although, or it might be my fault, because ggplot2 is not showing up here either. Okay, this is, either I totally port the, um, let's, um, it could have been my RM fancy stuff. Uh, let's do this. Perhaps I can't start with VS Code when I do this uh, fancy setup, so it could have been my fault. Um, let's get back. All right. Now let's restart this. ggplot2 does show up here. Let's render this again. Okay, so it was my fault. I, um, my RM stuff was totally bored, so it's not Portal's fault. So Portal, you're good, you're good. So we've got the uh, ggplot2 right here. Yeah. All right, up there. No, no, uh, no uh, shenanigans on that side. So, okay, we got Portal. Working for slides. Now let's start exploring just what this uh, template has in store for us. So it has slide number true. We'll may or may not keep that. Preview logo. See it. Oh, I. They have a CSS, don't they? I need to find that. Let's go find that. Um. Whoops. To go to Firefox for a second. Okay, let's find their styles.css. Yeah. Only six lines, nothing terribly fancy here, but we will grab it. Get the file. Lines there. I'm going to save that. So CSS. Anything else? There was a JavaScript file. Maybe we should just take that just in case. Oh, this is for the D3 stuff. Yeah, that's intriguing to me. I don't think I'll use it for the. Um, for my uh, main presentation in a month or in a couple weeks, but yeah, why not? We'll take it here. Oops. Don't think they have. Oh, they do have JavaScript file. Nice. This is called actors.js. Okay. 
Well, let's render this all over again. Oh, there are some images that we need to get to, I think. Yeah, we're... Yep, images, so... Ah, I should have just cloned this repo. <laughs> That's what I get for not doing that. Oh, good grief. Yeah, they have a lot of images there, so... You know what? We will clone it. Get the clone here. We'll do some uh, terminal magic. This is the fish shell. I don't know if you all use fish at all for your terminal sessions, but it is um, pretty nice, I would say. That's some nice auto-complete stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on that repo, so we'll just have to parse through this and get the images. Okay, so that was... Go back to the over tab here. Web, docs, presentations, reveal, JS, demo. Now we need attack R because we're going to copy the directory. That, not that. Images, and then that's gone. Projects, tracing. Boom, done. Okay. Should have that show up here. Yep. Let's render that again. I saw some 404s there, which were a little concerning. Let's see. Images, portal that. Maybe I need to restart this as well. Let's just make a clean, restart everything, and see if this finally works. Yeah, I think that did the trick. Okay, yep, so this is looking nice. Sure, everything just kind of renders well. Slide background. Oh, there's one image that let me get there. Transitions are really intriguing to me. You got the tab sets, interactive slides. This is that um, that I think that JavaScript stuff. So, oh, there's just so many cool uses for this. My brain is kind of super excited to try some of this out. Now maybe for this I have to open it in a browser art. Yeah, let's try that. Use the chalkboard button at the bottom left of the slide. I don't see a chalkboard button though. Huh, okay. Well, let's see, maybe, maybe hit the B key. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Oh, this is, this is fun. This is going to be very fun. Wow. Oh, this is, I'm overview more mode off the, off the bat. That's great. Yeah. Speaker view. This is something I really liked in Sharingan was having this on the other screen if I was projecting somewhere. So this is all good. Okay, cool. So, oh, I guess escape also does the overview. That's interesting. So let's see if we can skip through this. Yep, perfect. Now for the presentation I want to do in a couple of weeks, I want to maintain the look and the style of 
what I did for the apps that, or there were two, there were three apps in total, but two of them had the the style that matched the game itself. So let's um, start working through that a bit. I think I figured out why the VS Code thing wasn't working. It is because of RM stuff where I tried to do that custom profile and when I installed ggplot2 it was in the VS Code profile but when Quartal launches and that R session launches that's actually not going through VS Code that's just going through a terminal session so the default profile needs ggplot2 as well which we now have but we can do a quick check here this is the RM lock for the default which has ggplot2 but if we go to um, the RM directory and we go to profiles VS Code dev RM oh that's interesting I didn't snapshot that one did I okay all right, we're gonna close this. We're gonna go back to VS Code. And we are going to ensure that, yeah, we can snapshot this one. That may have been the problem. So this should have GDPlot2 in the list, yep. Okay, let's try rendering this again. We're gonna start fresh. Let's check our status here. Yep, so lock file. Two, that is there, perfect. Now, let's render this, Control shift K. seen anything. I think that's an old one. Let's try that again. Okay. Oh, that. There, was a... there we go. Oh, I think we, I think we got it. I think we got it. Yep. Now one quirk is that in my container setup, I have to hit that refresh button first, but once I do, then it's here. Yep, we've got the same view here, so let's get to that interactive thing. Oh yeah, the animations look good. App sets, yep, here we are. Let's make sure this works here, sure does. Fun, fun. Oh, that's that's super fun. Nice. Okay. Before we go further, Wisp of Buddha has a great question here. Knowing that you have to do this for every session, why would you use Docker? Do you have a script? Well, so good, good question. Um, main reason for doing this is i want to keep my host system kind of as clean as possible and having everything in containers means that i can have one project like this that is using bleeding edge software like Quarto, and then another one that can be very stable with you know more traditional um, r package stacks but the one thing that um, I can make better is I am planning on making an image of like the absolute bare minimum of what these these um, container files are bootstrapping at the outset um, and then that way when I bootstrap a new one it'll be very quick to install that on the system there was a little overhead tonight when I did it because I haven't cache those images yet um, but certainly it's both for cleanliness of my host system and for reproducibility and the ability to kind of toggle development environments accordingly um, 
So right now, actually, I want to try Quartal for work, but A, I can't do a production thing for that, and B, Quartal at this time cannot be installed easily on Linux hosts that are Red Hat or, you know, CentOS based, RPM based, if you will. They have installers for Debian based distributions. Um, but yeah, so I'm definitely gonna still keep like this, this stuff I'm building for the Shiny conference and the Shiny presentation this month are my first forays into this. And I hope by our studio conf or before that, they'll have the installers for the Linux distros. But yeah, there's no way that my, my trusted friends on our Linux team are gonna be able to install Portal on our systems at this point. So I'm using this as my uh, sandbox to try all this out. So Daniel, I have heard bits and pieces about either Rocker or Docker itself not playing nicely on M1, but now I do have an M1 now, so I'm gonna keep, I'll keep, uh, I'll keep looking at it. I haven't, I've got Docker on there now, but I haven't like done much with it. I haven't tried to do this setup yet um, because Code Spaces has actually been very nice for me to work with on uh, a couple of uh, uh, projects. So yeah, I'll, I'll take a look again tomorrow and see how that goes. But anyway, I've got, I've got my, my choice of environments. I may, um, let's see what, we have here so I want to start looking at some of the options that are available to us with respect to styling because that is something I want to pull off here but first I need to uh, get to my repo where I had a bunch of custom stuff I think I had it in here so this is one thing I will be talking about in a couple weeks is this is one of the three apps that was part of this racing league thing. But each of these apps is like a different part of the of the story. So I feel like I can tell a cool story with this. This was the actual results, but I, I tailored it so that it used roughly the same font as the game itself with all this cool kind of racing stuff. And of course, the, the fun little interactive plot. Uh, <laughs> ignore the cars being backwards. I still haven't figured that piece out yet, but this is a cool way to kind of see the progress of the league as we go along and check out the little uh, car over here that's uh, yours truly that ends up having a, 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 a manic line at the finish and I, I won. Haha. <laughs> um, so for this, I want to see where I put the font stuff. Okay, fonts here. So in Shiny, thanks to BS Lib, and this was using Golem as well, I can leverage these custom fonts. Let me refresh my memory and how I actually did that here if it was in App UI. Aha, yep, yep. So I did this custom styling here. I'm gonna copy this just as a reference for my repo here. Let's close this out, start making some uh, notes here. Whoops. do fine oh, I, my winter for markdown does not like when i do a double oh, wait, a double header okay find a way to custom fonts inside the js slides snip it put the font in a shiny Golem. 
not evaluating this code, I'm just gonna copy it here. So first I need to copy out the CSS and the box. So in this repo here, the way I organized it was inst at dub dub dub. In fact, I may just copy that whole dub 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 folder into this. Okay, back to the other terminal. I should still have that hot shot dash forward. Yep. Dub. And then China racing like that. Okay. Get rid of that. So now we've got the custom CSS. And the uh, fonts. Let's save this file before we forget. So this was the style sheet, so hopefully in the Quarto, I can just reference that here instead. So it's, it's time to break stuff. Let's see what happens here. So we have... What was that? Referencing here, it was. I think we can have more than one CSS file. Let me double check though. Let's go back to Portal. Let's see if we can find CSS here. One or more CSS sheets, okay. Okay, perfect. So we should, oh, it's through the user guide, yeah. themes here. So it's got themes automatically, so we might try some of these as well. Should be some of the CSS in here too. Or is that the only reference they have to it? Okay. Okay, let's give it a shot. So, go back here. I think in YAML we do multiple things with the bracket. I hope I'm right, but we'll find out. What was that? Calm TT. Don't ask me how to pronounce that, but uh, my friend Yannick got that for me. <laughs> he hacked the system, as they say. Um, and then let's look at the Quartal article on the fonts. I think there was something about fonts here. Or is that in the other reference here?
Very similar alpha set the CSS font family. Main font, font size. So I think main font is going to be the name that we had. here which was yeah all right let's see what breaks shall we That definitely does not <laughs> a new font, does it? So we got uh, we got some work to do here. Um, the The issue is, did this get picked up at all or not? I'm not or let's first open it as a browser. Maybe that's the first step. Seeing if our inspector here reveals anything. Uh, slide files. Spaces. Yikes, that's a lot. Okay, so there it is, but whoever it actually picked it up is another story. The safe thing to do is we just put that. Let's see. I don't want to. Safe thing to do is just to move it out of here and move it into the root of the of the repo, or copy it over there anyway. Oh, nice. Uh, the, the, um, what's that called? The IntelliSense picked up the main font thing. Um, okay. Let's try it again. Nope. Come on. Let's see what some of these warnings are, if that helps us with anything. That's a different thing. Um, okay, must be something else going on with the font. I don't know how to figure that out yet. It's probably going to be more trial and error. So let's look at some of the features that I may want to try out here with reveal JS and then we'll call it a night after that. We can at least start with the theme, changing the theme a little bit. Maybe what we do is we do the theme, but then we take the approach that is in the docs here and we might build our own SCSS file that changes certain things. And this is similar to the customization you can do with BSLib as well. So I think we can maybe just use that approach instead. So it's kind of like creating a theme. I want to build in the parts that I want customized. So that might be the approach we take for the or the slides here. Um, but we can at least play with a different theme now and 
let's get this back. Whoa, 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 no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. We'll get this back to style.css and we'll take off the main font thing. Let's try the dark theme. Perfect. And they had a section on background images, I thought. That's a different thing, hold on. Boy, that was in the examples, silly me. There should be some uh, background in here. Yeah, set the background attribute on the slide. Change the color. Yeah, media backgrounds, an image, the video and iframe. All right, let's learn about that. Okay, so I think in my in my app I use um oh, maybe I did I use a background in the app? No, I'm even just style. Okay, never mind. Oh, it's the other app I did the background in. So I have to, like I said, I have like two of these here, so that was a shot random. show you what that looks like this is actually on the trailer for when i go online or live stream this is part of the apps that is in the trailer so i want this background just to see if that works so let's um <laughs> jackie chan welcome but you were saying you made it to the twitch world well nothing bad ever happens oh oh yeah oh yeah well uh, it would have to be really catastrophic to match what's happened earlier today to me so i'll uh i'll, I'll press my luck i guess but uh it's been a, it's been a doozy of a day so um let's get that background image Uh, <laughs> it's story time, huh? Okay, I don't know why the sound failed there, but... Um, well, what can I say? What can I say? Um, couple things. Couple things. One thing that took me many, many years to realize, and now this year it's kind of come to fruition again, is that sometimes when you work on multiple teams and you have different parts of a bigger system that have choices made on particular stacks or particular philosophies of both development and you might say user experience and, and and those things when it comes down to it i am the type that i want to have the technical merits both from the actual like coding tech but also the tech of how these are being deployed how are users interacting with this what are they expected to generate out of it how are things networked together? Those are the things that I 
would hope would drive most decisions on why we choose the choices we make to develop these things. Unfortunately, I have found out the hard way that for one major project that I helped kind of launch a bit and then relied on other help to keep it going further, that that other help has not quite panned out the way I wanted, that there are a lot of non-technical factors that are probably going to lead to a decision that I personally am not going to agree with. And at this point, I'm faced with, do I keep quote, fighting the good fight on this and trying to appease back to the technical merits of sticking with Shiny and sticking with R for this one major piece of this analytical pipeline? Or do I just simply kind of cut my losses, find a different project and kind of let, let this other group take it over? They'll rip it up. They'll put some custom Node.js thing in front instead, and then it's going to look just like the other apps in the space that are not nearly as complicated. So I'm at the point where how much more do I go? There were things said that I definitely do not agree with, even about R itself, which you ever want to know how to trigger me. It's when people come with misconceptions about R. Uh, <laughs> There is one nugget, I almost don't even want to say it, but it, um, I hone in on it like a hawk and I try to dis debunk it. And ironically, I'm not even sure if my, or my, um, my justification even worked. You got people that made up their mind. Sometimes this happens. So. The way it went down was not ideal. Luckily, I had people on the call that were kind of seeing what I was seeing, but we we, um, we kind of, uh, at, at that point, didn't really um, have a way to dissuade it further. And no real, like, no final thing's been made yet. There's still some leeway here. But if they end up refactoring the whole thing, it's... First, I'm definitely not going to be part of actually doing that refactoring because the refactoring is a thing that I honestly don't understand. But when people look at cost of two proposals, I had one proposal, there's another side with another. You cannot just look at that cost at face value of just like vendor A or vendor B with what they're going to charge in a work order. There is the time that will be frankly wasted by people like me and a few other people that have to literally walk people through that are doing this re-platforming and telling them, this is the way Shiny did such and such. Y'all gonna have to do that here, you know? That's still money that's being taken away from me or others doing the really cool stuff. Now, that was brought up, and frankly, not even me brought that up. That was another um, well-respected colleague that brought that up that has a boatload of experience, too. Um, so, they acknowledge it, but acknowledging it is just one thing. That if they do go through this other choice, it's still going to happen. And I've already been pretty upfront with some people <laughs> that if, if things go this way, not even just about the choice, it's about how the choice is being made. It's so different than what I'm also involved with. There are other parts of this, uh, outside of this particular project, where both I get to wear the owner hat and the developer hat. That's both good and bad, but at least at that point, I answer to basically myself and my boss on this is the approach we're taking, here's the rationale for why, and here's what we're gonna do to benefit users out of it and all that. That obviously feels more comfortable to me because the people I'm working with on those projects, we can't do what we are supposed to do without our involved. Just full stop. We can't do it. But 
I also freaking love it, so that's why I love those projects. Um, but it, the other side, I will say, Daniel, you are not far off in what you just said there. This was actually part of the argument of the con of sticking with our current stack was the person felt that in the long term, everything would be taken over by JavaScript and Python and data science, full stop. And I was like, mm, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that was, um, that was, uh, <laughs> I'm so happy about it. I'm so happy about it because if y'all have ever seen what we've been talking about in R and Pharma the past few years, someone joked that the first year of R and Pharma should have been called the, the Pharma Shiny Conference because more than half the presentations about how people in life sciences were, were, were using Shiny throughout. So it was like, I. Right. I, I don't. Um, so, <laughs> but but it, and it, 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 uh, ironically, Python's not even involved in this conversation. They were just using this as an example. But I was like, <laughs> so after that was over. Luckily, I didn't have to like do any substantial work after that today. <laughs> I was able to listen in a couple things as my brain was kind of spinning. I'm hoping to talk with some people tomorrow just to regroup on things. And honestly, to make sure that if I wasn't off base, I felt like I was very cordial. I felt like I was very matter of fact about the, the pros and cons of this. Um, and, and we'll see, we'll see. Um, but. I, I have there there's there is some good support in my media group the thing is is that whenever you work with different groups there's just it's a people thing there are people that are heck bent on their ways and sometimes you just you just there's not much you can do but that's what it is so <laughs> Hmm. There is a saying in, ironically, the, the, the thing I watch a lot in my spare time, although not as much as I used to, but in the world of professional wrestling, there's always one quote. Never say never. So, given what uh, somebody just said in the chat, I will just say again, never say never. <laughs> um... <sighs> It's that, that was that was something. So, the the straw that broke the camel's back a little bit is that earlier in the day, my uh, direct report discovered that for the second time, we had somebody commit unencrypted in plain text passwords to databases. That happened earlier this year. I may have ranted about that in a previous stream, actually. And it happened again. So. The same people that would do the replatforming are the ones that did that. Take that for what it's worth, folks. <laughs> uh, so. All these things just kind of come together and as long as you have a hard time kind of parsing what should I take from this, what should I keep in mind, or what should I discard as like an isolated thing, but I'm a statistician. I look at patterns, right? I know there's uncertainty. I mean, that's part of my job is to deal with the uncertainty, but you see patterns here and sometimes the pattern leads to something that I think is going to be a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so the the saga will continue one way or another um there are some short-term things that we have to fix for it but one thing if you are looking for any silver lining in this is that nothing will ever go perfectly but 
it's hard to do in the moment, but as this as the dust settles on this, I have identified a two or three things that I could have done better right off the bat. One of them that's the hardest for me is to be assertive. Now, I think I've gotten a little better about that, but this is one project where I was definitely too nice in the beginning and too, what's the right word for it? Faithful in assuming that the resources I was, I were, I was getting were in tune with the way of good software engineering best practices combined with good data science. We didn't get the, we didn't get both of them. So assumptions can bite you, if, especially if you don't have experience with somebody before. This is my first time working with them, so I learned the hard way. So who knows, who knows, anyway. It's a good thing you all weren't talking to me immediately after that, because this probably would not be a very pleasant conversation <laughs> the minutes after that whole debate took place, so. Okay. Okay, well, let's end on a high note here. Um, let me get this image here. We're going to try that out on a slide, and then we're going to call it there, so. That is in Miss Images. Let's copy that in. Hot shots random. Dub, Miss Images. That's a little shiny race. W. Perfect. This should be as simple as tweaking this path here. So this was dub 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 and I see is let's look at our file system just to be sure. And this was hotshot underscore background. JPG. Okay, let's render that again. Obviously, we have to do more work on the transparency of it, but it's there. That, that racing background's there, so. Cool, another feature that works as advertised on this awesome Reveal.js. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy working with this. I can definitely see some good stuff here. Yuka underscore with underscore data just subscribed. Oh, Yuka! Oh, friendly face. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Not sure if you heard the epic rant just now, but I've, I've had quite a day, so you've all been very helpful to cheer me up. It's been, uh... I was joking with somebody earlier today, and this whole week has been... You know the meme where you're just sitting somewhere and... Yeah, or somebody sitting looks like a kitchen and saying everything's fine and the whole fire around them that that's been that's been that's been today in the past couple of days but today was definitely where that had a little proverbial fire was like exploding around me so that that is uh very nice so good good so the one thing that's annoying me but it may not, I may not be able to figure it out tonight, will be the font. I do want that custom font. But I 
don't know if that's something I do in BS Lib or in SAS. Uh, this is the <laughs> West Pacific Budo will appreciate this. I'm talking about the good kind of SAS with the two S's at the end. Um, figuring that piece out. Um, does that deal with fonts or is that something we're gonna have to do elsewhere? Because here, set the font family on the HTML element. But I would think that if I include the CSS for the font, it should pick it up. So I don't know. I almost want to get this one to go. I'm annoyed by it, so I want to fix it. Let's look at what style CSS actually has. Maybe I just throw everything in there just to try it out. Yeah, I could just throw that, this stuff in here. Oh, 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 oh. It's the paths in here, I bet. Yeah. Okay, so I've got to figure this out. It's probably easier if I just move the fonster out of the www folder and just move it here. That way we just keep it like this. I always forget I should do like a uh, find and replace here. No. Eliminate potential chaos. Perfect. So let's keep that there. And we'll try. Placing that here. Oops. Get rid of that. Stop the preview here manually. And then let's try it again. Still no luck. But I probably need to do something. Either. Huh. I'm probably gonna have to do some homework after this. I don't have the brain. The brain cells to figure out how to get the custom font working, but at least we got the image working and I got quarter working in general, which is way more than what I got last week when I got mired in the Docker uh, nonsense. So again, the presentation I plan to do in a couple weeks is, um, is, um, to tie together the story of building each of these apps. And I guess the key message I wanna get across is that even things like this, where literally this is with a, a group of fun Linux nerds like me uh, online, having fun with a game every Sunday, that you can take these explorations and the learning you get from that can literally directly impact your your other projects, whether they're also fun projects or even your your uh, day job or school projects. So it's always great to find these ways to learn. But Shiny gave me a way to learn in this in this space using R and Shiny together. Gave me an interesting way to explore helping the process of an end-to-end -end data data aggregation or data assembly to processing, to 
to hosting that data and then to serving up metrics around it. So I mean, I'm gonna try and still frame it into something that's actually useful. But to be honest, it was just darn fun to get with a bunch of Linux nerds and, and, build, and build over-engineered apps and, and services on top of what we were doing. Um, so I'll, I'll have that narrative. I think that will be more than enough for a 15 minute talk and then I'll use Portal to bootstrap all those thoughts together and make sure these apps are, looks like the apps are still working at least. So that's good to know. Let's double check to be sure. Yep. Yep, I'm gonna throw some reactable goodness in there and eCharts interactivity here. I may uh, clean up the displays on this a little bit. Um, but yeah, more reactable stuff. Marking the victory. So I, I, I did as much as I could with this, um, with this data set. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely happy with it. This was, this was a fun, a fun project to, to make here. So, all right. Any closing thoughts here? Well. Again, I'm super excited for Cordo. Um, once I get through building this presentation, then I turn my attention to using Cordo to actually build all the workshop materials. And so I have to start finding examples to take the, 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 tra the trainees through um, that kind of build a story throughout about using, you know, the, the advanced and the production-like uh, principles for shiny development. So I gotta find a good example that I can take bits and pieces of in each of the modules and implement some of the great advice that uh, Garrick Aiden Bowie uh, gave me um, a few weeks ago in our cool little chat that I still have very fond memories of. It was super fun to, to talk with him, so. Okay, well, um, again, just a quick little plug before we get out of here, but our weekly is is back and the podcast this episode was um episode 73 fun little listen um portal was a big focus and then there's also great stuff with Gigi plot um this great story by um albert rapp who's been on the highlights before but he has this great implementation of taking what he saw in a great video about storytelling with data and putting code around it to actually replicate that with ggplot2 and i i'm i'm just amazed at the just how good these plots can look and it makes it look like that this was something that was done in the uh, proprietary image software like adobe illustrator or some of the other ones you hear about that are not cheap at all but they can do this all from art itself i think that's that is awesome Oh, oh no, Yuka, I'm so sorry. Let me, I have a, I have a, I'm gonna try and take care of that for you. Oh, I need to. I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I told you I'm like terrible with, with. Okay, I removed the timeout now. Um, it's, it's. I'm, I'm, I'm working frantically to get this done. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. All right. All right, Yuka. I don't know if you're still there, but you've got you got VIP rights. I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> And the thing, you just made me a mod recently for your channel, and now I do this. I, I don't know. Um, but you, yeah, you should be able to post links, though. I'm so sorry for that. That's the first time I was able to do that myself on my own stream without Tan's help. <laughs> so that was, that was great, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, you can, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions you have about Cordo. Uh, go ahead. I'm, Gonna look at some stuff while you um, type that away. Um, but the other things I need to uh, figure out here. Are... Okay, well, th yeah, this is this is exactly the kind of thing that I've been thinking about and and reading about 
especially in preparation for the last podcast, but Yuka's asking, what is the difference between Portal and R Markdown? So both Portal and R Markdown are based on, you know, using Markdown itself as the way to write your prose of the documentation or your, your descriptions of the report. But the key difference with Quarto is that you can certainly still do our markdown, you know, type documents with Quarto. But now, Quarto is a separate installation or software. Whereas, if in the R markdown world, it was an R package and you were basically tied to R to use it. But with Quarto, you can have the same benefits of R markdown in additional languages without necessarily committing fully to that said language. So what I mean is that if you're a Python enthusiast and you just want the R Markdown like experience, but with Python, you can just install Quarto and then you can just code up a, a file, which I'll, I'll show this again in Visual Studio Code. You notice the extension here, it's not RMD, it's QMD. So you can use Quarto as a front end to what Daniel's referring to here as a front end to say Jupyter as the engine behind it. And you can have syntax that looks just like, you know, what we have here. And then you can have chunks that are more, say Python chunks and R doesn't even have to be involved, but you can mix and match these. So you can have R chunks and Python chunks, Julia chunks, JavaScript chunks, all in the same document, and you get to pick and choose that. You're not confined to one host language to compile all these. So this is a game changer, and I don't say that lightly, but what I feel Portal has represented in the short time I've used it, it's taking a lot of the good from our markdown and writing a lot of the lessons learned from our markdown to make, in essence, this more agnostic, more general purpose documentation publishing engine with literate programming. So I think it's a great time to dive into it um, because you're gonna be able to get a lot of nice things under the hood that in the R markdown ecosystem, R markdown itself has a few great features in it but you always had to wet, go to other R packages to get some of the additional formats. Like I've talked about making websites of R Markdown via Blogdown before for my Shiny Dev Series site and my R Podcast site. Those are Blogdown sites and I'm still sticking with that, don't get me wrong. But that's, that wasn't part of R Markdown proper. That was an additional package that linked it with Hugo. But with Quarto, you're getting a lot, and I mean a lot, under the hood right away. Um, gosh, I'm sorry, my keyboard went crazy there, but what I mean by that is you've got opportunities to create HTML, PDF, Word documents, advanced HTML, presentations, like I said, reveal JS, you can have interactive documents with JavaScript. You can have implement Shiny and as then you have Jupyter widgets, um, make websites and books out of it. And these are all things that you needed additional packages to do in the broader R Markdown ecosystem. But Quartal's bringing all of this to you, in essence, free of charge. Um, without needing additional software. All you need to get started is to install the Quartal CLI, and then you choose what your front end you want to have. So our Studio and VS Code are what I use right now, but it's gonna have support for even Emacs and other text editors and Jupyter as well. So you've got a lot of choice here, a lot of flexibility. That is what I'm really excited about. Um, and there's going to be, and again, I don't work with them, but I, I can read between the lines, a lot of improvements even coming in the next few months because at our studio comp, there are going to be workshops for Portal. There are going to be presentations on Portal. That's kind of like what I think, you know, I have 
people from our studio on this audience here, so maybe I'm putting words in your own mouth, but I think our studio comp is kind of like this hello world extravaganza for Cordo for the whole art community. Um, so I feel like there's going to be a lot of improvement, so stay tuned. You may even have to refresh your Cordo install from time to time as they start building in new features. So it's rapidly evolving, but I think now it's the great time to learn. There's there's a lot happening. So Yuka, if you're interested in learning more about this, I would highly recommend it and getting getting experience with it. There, I think it's for what you've gone through in your recent uh, data science kind of coursework and your project. I think Quartal is going to be an awesome fit for you, especially as you're starting to explore not just R and machine learning, but also Python um, in other ways as well. You'll be able to put all that together in a very easy way um, from what I'm seeing here. So, whoa. So Daniel, with some late breaking info, you are on the planning committee for the R Medicine Conference. Yes, yeah, so that is a very close counterpart, albeit as a separate group from what I'm involved with with the R Pharma Conference, but Yes, I, I, there is a lot of work involved with planning. I am part of the organizing and you might say the tech kind of social committees for our pharma. Um, so there's, yeah, you've got, you've got a lot on your plate. Now, I don't know what the timing is for our medicine this year. I hope it's after our studio comp. If it's before, then, oh boy. Um, <laughs> For our pharma, we're definitely after our studio comp, thankfully, because I otherwise I probably wouldn't be able to help out like I plan to uh, for for that one. So, so yeah, yeah, I'm sure uh, Quarto will probably be a hot topic in both of those conferences as well, not just at our studio comp. Um, I I can already tell you little um, insider info that the our pharma people are really interested in Quarto. Um, I can definitely tell you that so okay um well good i we we've had i've had fun tonight i didn't get a lot done per se but at least i got portal working i got the idea for the slides and now i just got to do some tweaking to make it look the way i want from a stylistic perspective and explore some of these um amazing features um like i'll step through the gallery again like these things here, like just highlighting code lines in a chunk like the uh, display chunk like this, those were things that had to be custom in frameworks like Sharingan or some of the other ones. But we're able to do this like right off the bat here. That's really, really fun. Um, yeah, the, the the transitions. This is this is this is gonna be fun. Like. I'm not going to close the door on Sharingan yet because I still think Sharingan is an amazing project. But I feel like with this, especially for presentations where I don't have as much time to make very, what's the right word for it, glitzy or, or, or um, fancy, what Reveal.js with Cordal gives me under the hood, I think gets me like as far away there as I need to be without having the resort to the very worst case scenario of doing PowerPoint slides. Like I will avoid that as much as I possibly can <laughs> because I love doing web-based slides. So it looks like Portal is gonna let me um, get through that pretty well. So, okay, well, we, we've, we've had a good talk here and again, um, I, this was, a, this was quite a day, so I'm very happy that I was able to have a smile on my face at the end of today, because I sure needed it, and um, hopefully, whatever happens to that project, I don't know, but it's going to be, it's going to be a thing, one way or another, but you know, keep your head up, and find the silver linings and everything, every, every journey has its ups and downs, so this was one of those days, yep, yep, gotta have the courage, gotta, how to persevere and and hopefully have some fun along the way so all right well like i said i will um keep y'all up to date on some of the cool stuff happening 
But yeah, stay tuned for the Absalon Shiny Conference later in April. And um, yeah, the workshop prep is already underway. So I'm going to sign off now. I'm definitely going to take advantage of hopefully getting some sleep earlier and um, be rested tomorrow for what I'm sure there's going to be some more, you might say, candid discussions <laughs> along the way. So have a great night, everybody. And thanks for joining in. And thank you for the, the subs, uh, West Pacific Buddha and Yuka. That was, that was certainly very much appreciated. Um, and yeah, feel free to give me feedback on things you'd like to see me talk about in my dev journey. Always happy to bring you all along and share feedback. And I think um, we might have some opportunities based on a stream earlier today, maybe to work with one of you in the community on some pair programming with Shiny, especially with somebody that's kind of new to it, that's coming from a web dev background. So that might be fun to do, so. We'll see, but y'all have an awesome night. We'll see each other, I'm sure, on the interwebs uh, throughout. But um, have a good one, and thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time. That's End of Line. Bye, everybody.